Hello everyone and welcome back to my beginner series of videos. I hope that you're enjoying these videos and that you're finding them super helpful and super resourceful. That is my goal. Um, I was a beginner once and I remember feeling so overwhelmed by you know this product versus that product. Why do you use this pen versus that pen? And so my hope was to kind of you know, take us all back to the basics and, um, you know, so that you can pull out some of these tools you might not have used in a while and you can get creating and you can remember how fantastic they are. That's right. So today we're going to talk about some top coloring tools. That's right. And uh, we're going to start out talking about our watercolor pencils, which are one of my favorites. And then, of course, one of the you know, most common techniques with watercolor pencils is you got to blend it, right? You've got to blend the watercolor pencils. And so to do that, we're going to talk about the water painters and we're going to talk about our blender pens and how, um, you know, the differences in these two and how they work in uh, your blending and adding color. So I'm really excited to get started, super excited to show you how these work and some of their differences. And maybe you'll pick up a tip or two along the way. And of course, if you like my video and you're enjoying this series, please be sure to click the thumbs up and like my video and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Now you can go to brandyscards.com slash beginners and you can subscribe to receive updates uh, and notifications when my videos are going to be going live, what the next video is going to be, and you might even get information if there's an upcoming series as well. So make sure you go over to brandyscards.com slash beginners and subscribe. Now you're also going to be able to find all of my videos there uh, from this series, right? So the videos that we've already shared they are going to be there. You can scroll through and of course any PDFs that we have for you as well, you'll be able to download them there too. All right, so let's go ahead, let's jump right in. I'm super excited. I had fun preparing for this video because watercolor pencils are one of my favorite and I love the Aqua Painter and I love my blender pen. So I'm excited to kind of show you the difference in the two. Now, let's just start out with the basics. When you're getting ready to use these tools, what exactly do you need to get started? So we're gonna just the basics. You're gonna need some stays on ink. The stays on ink is because we're gonna be watercoloring either with a blender pen or, or well, I should say a blender pen has its own solution, but you still need a stays on ink or the water painter. So you need a stays on ink for that image. You're also gonna need some cardstock. So I have here um, some basic white cardstock. I personally like the basic white thick for my coloring needs, um, but you can also use the regular cardstock as well. Of course, we have our um, watercolor paper. So we have our Fluid 100 watercolor paper. So you're gonna need that as well. Of course, you're gonna need some watercolor pencils and then one of our two tools to blend that uh, watercolor pencil, that, that layer of color. So you're gonna need that as well. So that's pretty much it. Now we do have a couple other mediums that you can use when you're watercoloring. Um, you can use your shimmery white if you would like. So that is an option as well. And I did mention the basic white, just the regular cardstock works great too. So, all right. So there's three rules when watercoloring. Yeah, there's three rules. So the first rule is that you're gonna lay down the color. That's right, so I'm gonna show you exactly how I do that. And then the second is you're gonna add the water and you're gonna add the water one of two ways. We're gonna talk about that. And then of course you're gonna let it dry and that would be rule number three. So you're gonna let it dry and then I call it reevaluating. Once you let it dry, you're gonna go back in and you're gonna look at it and say, okay, maybe I need to add a little bit more color to it or add some more highlights or dark shades and so forth. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here. So here are my watercolor pencils. I'm gonna set these two guys aside and let's just focus on our watercolor pencils right now. So I'm gonna just show you a couple of different things. So Stampin' Up! offers the watercolor pencils. This is, this one here is our assortment number one and you'll see there's 13 beautiful colors. And here is the assortment number two. All right, so you can see the different assortments in there. Let me show you those in our Stampin' Up! catalog as well. So you can see right here is where you would find them in our Stampin' Up! catalog. Depending on when you're watching this video, 
They might actually be in a different location throughout the catalog, but currently they're on page 126 um, of the 2021-2022 Stampin' Up! annual catalog. All right, so that's where you can find them right now. You can also see the different colors listed there depending on the assortment that you're interested in. So one thing that I love is these um, pencils, they're actually numbered. That's right, do you see the numbers here on the box? So real red is number one, number two is Calypso Coral, and so forth. So they are all numbered, you can see the names of those colors. So then when you open up your pencils, and they slide right out, I'm gonna try to keep them in order here. So when they slide out of this box, there we go. So the cool thing is, is you will find the numbers of these pencils are actually on the pencil themselves as well, as well as the color. Do you see as I'm lining these up? Yeah, so you know, hopefully you can see those numbers on the pencil. You can also see the colors and the shades. So this is one through 13. This set of colors is gonna be 14 through 23. And so these are some additional colors that you can use in your color palette here while you're creating. So I'm going to take my 14 through 21. Look at all of those beautiful colors. Oh my goodness. They are stunning, stunning, stunning. Now let's talk a couple, just a couple of minutes about our watercolor pencils. Let's say you need to sharpen them. You're just going to use a pencil eraser. That's right. So very gently use a pencil, um, not a pencil eraser, a pencil sharpener. That's right. So you're going to use a pencil sharpener to sharpen those pencils. Um, that's one thing that you're going to want when using these. Um, you know, and the other thing that I love is all of these pencils, they coordinate with our Stampin' Up! cardstock, with our Stampin' Up! ink, with our Stampin' Up! embellishments. So that is one of the beautiful things, are these are our Stampin' Up! colors. So if you go to the color families, you're going to be able to coordinate your coloring and shading with the cardstock, ink, and so forth. So pretty fantastic. All right, so I'm gonna set that back aside for a second here. Now, a couple other really nice things, other than that they're numbered and you can see the names of everything, they're very cost effective. That's right, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about some of the benefits of the different um, pens here. So you get all of, what, we got 13 or so for $14, or 1250, I should say, was that um, the second collection, and I think the first collection was $16. So it's just a really, really good price. Now your watercolor pencils, they're really easy to use. That's right, they are very, very easy to use. Um, one thing that I love is there's only one step. You pick it up and you start coloring. That's right, so if you're talking about a marker or something like that, you have a cap, you have a cap that might get lost. I like to travel a lot. And um, when I traveled to work in different places, sometimes I would take things on the airplane and I would color away, and I'm fine with taking my markers, but it is really nice, honestly, to be able to have my watercolor pencils instead, because I don't have to worry how I'm storing them. They, you know, they don't have to be vertical or horizontal. They can be stored, you know, they're pretty convenient, right? So you just put them in a bin, um, whereas our markers need to be stored, you know, horizontal. Um, so that's another thing that I like. There's no smell to the watercolor pencils, so that's nice as well. They're not permanent, so you don't get any stains on your hands. You're not going to get any stains on your work surface. So that is another really great uh, benefit of our watercolor pencils. So let's go ahead and I'm going to pull out some cardstock and I'm going to show you um, how they work. So here is... Um, here is a piece of watercolor paper and you know like I mentioned earlier they don't bleed through whereas some of our markers do and so that is a really nice feature and of course you know they are um, actually I'm gonna bring this piece in first um, they are widely available which is also quite nice now this piece that I'm showing you here is showing you how you can get different levels of color and that's by applying a very light kind of wash with the um, watercolor pencil and then of course more pressure and more pressure. So let me show you what I mean by that. So let's go ahead and how about actually let's grab Coastal Cabana. It's one of my favorites. 
So I'm just going to take Coastal Cabana and I'm going to very lightly color, just very lightly add some color to my watercolor paper here. So this is really just kind of showing you the watercolor pencils and how they work. So now I'm going to add more Coastal Cabana, but it's just going to be a little bit more pressure. All right. So you can see this is light pressure, more pressure. It's darker. And over here, well, I am going to push quite a bit harder and add some more over here. So that's one of the really nice things about the watercolor pencils is you can determine how light or dark, whereas a marker, you can't, you know, you don't have that level. So I just like to kind of get my water, my aqua painter going or my water painter going. And let me just turn this here. So this was the Coastal Cabana and it was very lightly colored. And do you see kind of that light, that light Coastal Cabana after I blended that? So then I'm gonna go over, and so this is the next one. So this one I put a bit more pressure, and so I'm just kind of swirling that water around on there, just to kind of blend that a little bit. And you can see that is a darker Coastal Cabana, isn't it? And of course, as you kind of, you know, kind of swirl out to the edge edges here, you can kind of create that, um, that really kind of pretty, you know, kind of blending or that sort of water background, right? So here we go. This one is the dark. And so this one I put a bit more pressure when I added this color. And can you see how vibrant and beautiful that is? So pretty. And so that is the Coastal Cabana, the same marker as the first two but I just continued to put a bit more pressure each time because it would give me kind of a different, a richer color or different color hue. So there you go. So to clean that, I'm just gonna kind of swoosh that over here to the side. Now this is light, real red. This is the medium and that is the dark. This is light melon mambo. This is medium and that is dark. So you can see um, those different rich color hues. Um, so again, when you're coloring with markers, you know, I did this by changing the level of pressure and how much color I laid down. You can't do that with a marker, right? So that is one thing that I love about our pencils. Um, okay, so now there are some other ways to blend, that's right. So one of the neat things is you can actually mix the two colors. So when you're watercoloring or you're using these watercolor pencils, you can actually mix two different colors. So up here I showed you Real Red and I showed you Melon Mambo. So I know Real Red is number one and Melon Mambo is number nine. So here we go. Let's do this. Let's take some Real Red and let's add some Real Red. So let's just say I am coloring and I like the Real Red, I like the Melon Mambo but I really want kind of this kind of color in between. So I just laid down some real red. Now I'm gonna add some Melon Mambo to that. Yeah, so I'm just coloring right back over that real red. And yes, you can do this and you can do it with like blues and greens um, and start to kind of create your own colors, if you will. So now I'm gonna blend this color and I'm kind of getting a brighter red, maybe a brighter, more pinky red. Um, and so, you know, kind of a fun lipsticky color, right? Um, and so that was just by blending the two different colors together. Um, so that is something that you can do as well. And that was created using those two colors. So I thought that was kind of cool as I played with these different colors and and blending them. I thought that was just kind of something really fun that I could share with you. Okay, so those are your watercolor pencils. They are fantastic. I'm gonna leave them here because I'm gonna show you some demonstrations as we move into talking about the aqua painter and the blender pen and how they blend these colors beautifully. Okay, so I'm gonna set this aside and we're gonna pull in here first we're gonna talk real quick about my aqua painter. 
actually they're called water painters now i keep saying aqua painter and some but you may watch other videos where people talk about aqua painters stampin up um, they, that's what they used to be called and within the last year or so we've now changed them to water painters and it's pretty cool you actually get three in a package that's right so check out this so you get three in a package you have um, one that has a fine tip and you have one that has a medium tip so this is kind of your medium tip and then you also have one that has a large flat brush tip so those are your three water painters that um, that come in one pack now these are pretty cool they're kind of a substitute for a paintbrush that's right so that's what I kind of think of them as a substitute substitute you know for that paintbrush um, you're not going to have quite as much control with these as you would um, our blender pen there's also a let me show you here this has um it's an empty cartridge in here that you can open or you know area that you open up and you can add water to it and so you can add water in here you can add alcohol in here um, so you can do different techniques and things um, by adding, you know, your water or your alcohol with some reinkers and that sort of thing. So I'm just going to screw that right back on. And so you can see mine has quite a bit of water in there. You can see that little bubble going back and forth. Um, the cool thing is with these different water painters, you can create that really pretty wash look. You can do the, blank, um, the bleaching technique. Uh, maybe, like I said earlier, you want to do the alcohol and reinker splatters. Um, just fun, you know, some fun things that you can do. All right, so let's go ahead and color one of these beautiful birds using our watercolor uh, pencils. And we're going to use our um, a water painter. All right, so I'm going to bring in my little piece here. So I'm just going to keep it simple and I'm going to focus on Coastal Cabana and Bermuda Bay. So when you're using your water painter, like I said, it's going to be, you're going to have less control, but you can create that beautiful washed type water painted look. So I'm just lightly adding a bit of Coastal Cabana right here to my bird, just real lightly adding a bit of Coastal Cabana. And remember, less is more. I can always go in and add more, right? So then I'm going to take my Bermuda Bay and I'm going to add a, li a little bit more pressure. That's right, a little more pressure. And then I'm going to color um, just kind of some accent areas. The cool thing about the Bermuda Bay is it's a darker color, so I don't really need to add a whole lot because when I take my water painter, so I'm just going to get my water painter ready, and I just I squeeze it a little bit. You can squeeze it. You'll see it says push. By pushing in here, it's going to allow the water to come down and go into that brush. Now, if you get too much water, you might have a tissue next by, nearby that you can kind of wipe it off or a rag. Um, I generally just use a piece of scrap watercolor paper or scrap um, rag that's close by or paper towel, something along those lines. So I'm going to start here with my Coastal Cabana in the center. That's my lightest shade and I am just going to very gently work my way through. Do you see that beautiful Bermuda Bay when it kind of lightens, you know, when you get that water on there, it sort of activates. It's absolutely beautiful. Now, if you feel like you have too much on your brush, uh, whether that be water, we talked about kind of wiping that off, or maybe it's color, maybe you want the color lighter. You can always kind of come over to that scrap paper and pull some of that color off if you would like. So that is something that you can absolutely do. So there's my bird, and if I want, I can kind of dress him up a little bit more. And let's just say we want to make him kind of a, you know, an orange. Let's kind of add some orangey kind of color down in here for his breast feathers. And then how about we just add a touch of yellow for color? So we can just add a touch of yellow right in here. So then by doing that, you want to make sure that your aqua painter or your water painter is clean. And you're going to come back in here and I'm just going to kind of, you know, let that water do the work for me and kind of swirl it up towards, um, you know, towards his blue feathers. 
and you can kind of see that already coming to life. Now his beak is kind of tiny, so you can also pick up some of the color right off the tip of the um, watercolor pencil. That's right. So just pick it up right off the tip, and you can add it right to his um, to his beak. Okay, so that is a tip for you as well that you can pick up the color also from the pencils. Okay, so that bird, he is beautiful. I wanted to show you a couple other birds that I colored. It's the same bird, but this one is on a shimmery white. This one is another one on watercolor paper. This one here is on a basic white thick cardstock. Yep, basic white thick cardstock. And I just stamped him. I colored the exact same way because I wanted to show you the difference here in the two birds. And, um, and so they're both colored with an aqua painter, watercolor pencils. This one is that wash I was telling you about. Um, it's really easy to do. It's really fun to do. And you know, if you had a scene or something like that, um, to get that kind of beautiful, um, you know, blue background around him, all you're really gonna do is just sort of add some light. Actually, that one is dark Bermuda Bay. I want some coastal cabana. So you're just gonna add a bit of this color right around him. And I'm not looking for it to be dark by any stretch. And the good thing is, is, you know, I can always go in and add more, right? So let's just keep it simple. And you take and, and kind of do your swirly around, and it just adds a little bit of that watercolor wash to the background of your bird. And it kind of highlights him and brings him to life makes him look very realistic, like he's out in nature. Um, you know, so it's just kind of a fun look that you can do on some of your, for some of your scenery stamps and things like that. So here, that might be hard to pick up in the camera, but there's definitely a difference in these two. One has that beautiful kind of blue wash in the background. And here it is on the basic white, thick cardstock as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and put that aside and let's move on to our blender pen. So here's our blender pen. So let me just pull that in. Here's our blender pen. It comes in a pack of three. It is dual tipped. That's right. So let me pull these guys out. So it comes in a pack of three and that's kind of nice because if one starts to kind of get dry up on you, dry up on you, you can kind of you can toss it after a while and, and use a different one. It does have a specialized solution inside of it for blending. So it's already inside. You can't refill it. You can't take it apart. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, you have this dual tip. So both sides are the exact same. So for your coloring. Now with our blender pen, you're going to have a bit more control. That's right. So think of using a blender pen like a marker. Whereas an aqua painter or a water painter, you don't have as much control. Our blender pen, you do. It's kind of like a marker. Okay, so let me show you what I mean by that. Um, so here, let me grab this bird again, and I'm just gonna set a couple of these guys aside. And so here's my bird. We're gonna do the exact same thing, Coastal Cabana and Bermuda Bay. So we're gonna lightly add our Coastal Cabana, and I'm just kind of, very lightly, just gently kind of adding that color. And then I'm gonna go back over just like I did before and add my darker Bermuda Bay to my bird, just like that. Then you have your blender pen. And I'm just gonna, I like to kind of start in the center. You wanna make sure your, your brush is clean. It looks like I've been using it on some green type stuff. So you wanna make sure it's clean. And to clean it, you just kind of swipe it back and forth. And then we're gonna start to blend it here. And I already know that I've got plenty of, of my dark Bermuda Bay in there, that it will absolutely blend that out beautifully. So um, you just, you know, you just kind of worked through it. Now, whereas with a water painter, you're gonna get that really kind of watercolory look. This is a little bit different you can sort of blend the colors down and they do get lighter, 
but it is a different type of it is a different type of pen. So, and you're not going to get quite as much liquid, if you will. So there is my orange. Here is a little bit of yellow. I'm just kind of doing it the same so you can kind of see the difference in the two. So we're cleaning it off and then coming back in and I'm just going to sort of, let's see, do I want to blend up? Maybe let's just sort of blend that yellow down into that beautiful orange. And so you can see how it just, it blends beautifully. Now earlier I mentioned, use it like a marker. You can come right over here to your watercolor pencil and kind of swipe the tip and you can add more color and make it a little bit darker, kind of like you're using a marker. Yeah, just kind of, you know, if you wanted to accent some of these lines on him, um, you can absolutely do that and kind of darken it up that way. So that is kind of the uh, ins and outs of the old uh, blender pen. I love my blender pen um, and I use it for just, you know, different things. Um, when I need more control is really kind of when I, I use it most. Um, this would be a blender pen with watercolor pencils and this is your thick basic white cardstock. So I did want to show you the difference in the two. Um, you know, and this one I don't believe I added yellow, so that's why Here's one on, on the thick cardstock that I did add the yellow. Um, so you can kind of see the differences here. This was one that I did a little bit earlier as well. It's also on watercolor paper. But these were all colored using the watercolor pencils and the blender pen. Um, so let me just show you a couple of different things real quick. Um, I want to show you one more thing over here. Let me grab my... I just want to grab uh, a piece of watercolor paper and let me show you this just really quick and we'll do it with our Melon Mambo. So I'm going to add some Melon Mambo over here just to kind of give you kind of the example. I'm going to add two Melon Mambos, okay? And so the first Melon Mambo is going to be my Aqua Painter. So here's my Aqua Painter Melon Mambo. I just added some water and I'm just going to blend this beautiful color with my aqua painter or my water painter. And it's beautiful. You can see that, that beautiful watercolor wash that as I blend out, you can totally see how that, that is, you know, got that beautiful watercolor wash. So then if I take my blender pen and I can do the exact same thing, and I'm just gonna start here kind of in the center. And as you swirl, you can see I have more control over where I'm moving my ink. And it's a little bit brighter, right? Because it's not quite as diluted as it is with that, um, that water painter. So I'm just kind of moving that around. So I just kind of wanted to show you the difference in those two. It's a little bit harder to bleed out or to get that wash look. Um, because it is more kind of like using a marker. So that is the difference in the two. Um, I love the fact that you can blend those different colors, right? So you can take a real red watercolor pencil and a melon mambo and then, you know, you know put those that color down, lay that color down. Um, and then, of course, you can add the blender pen or the water painter to, you know, blend it. Um, and you can get another color. So I think that's pretty cool. Now, a couple of tools that I haven't talked about yet that are fantastic coloring tools as well. Y'all know what they are. Those are Stampin' Blends and of course our um, Stampin' Write markers. Now, I recently did a video on those two markers and the differences in the two and the blending capabilities. So I'm not gonna get into detail today about the Stampin' Blends and the water, um, the Stampin' Write markers. However, I do have a couple of cards here to share with you. Um, so here is the Stampin' Blends. And I took these colors um, from my Stampin' Blend collection and the same bird that I just showed you, I colored this bird for our Creativate retreat. So this was our last Creativate online stamping retreat and you can see he was colored just the same as I colored my other bird but with some different colors and Stampin' Blends instead. And then of course I added my, I, you know, colored my flower as well. So that's kind of fun. 
And um, this guy was also colored for a retreat, a Stampin' Up! Um, one of our Creative 8 online retreats. And he was colored using the blends as well. So as you can see, our Stampin' Blends are beautiful coloring tools for sure. Um, absolutely stunning. Um, and if you like these cards, and just, uh, just so you know, these are actually from our retreat. So the only way to get the tutorials for these videos is to go to my online store and you can purchase the tutorials for these. Um, we do have another retreat coming up April 30th. So if you're interested in joining us, we'd love to have you. Starting on April 1st of 2022, we're gonna open up our registration. There will be an early bird. So of course, more details will be coming about that soon. We've got, um, we've got some extra tutorials for you if you register a little bit earlier. So we're really excited. We've got some fun projects as always, and it's a fun day to craft together for sure. Um, and I'm just going to kind of hold these up. Remember, we have the Stampin' Write markers and then, of course, the Stampin' Blends. Um, beautiful blending tools. And, of course, these are, um, I've got a video that I shared these, uh, these markers prior. And so you can go to brandyscards.com slash beginners and you can find all of those videos listed there. Of course, if you have any questions, be sure to let me know, um, you know, and if you have a tip or something to share, please be sure to do so. There's so many more things that I'd love to share with you and, um, you know, show you different ways to pick up inks and that sort of thing. But I think we're going to save that for another video. So I hope that you pull out those watercolor pencils a blender pen, an aqua a painter, or a water painter, whichever one that you have, and you get coloring. It is so much fun. Um, and it is so fun to add color to your beautiful images and, um, and backgrounds as well. I love making backgrounds. It's one of my most favorite things to do. Now, I think that's it for me today. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to like and subscribe. I would truly appreciate that. Um, and also, you know, visit brandyscards.com for further information about upcoming videos. Thank you for joining me today. Bye, everybody.